Good morning. Bonjour, everybody. It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020, Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And our team since 2020 has reached out directly and indirectly to over 300,000 dads and fathers and male caregivers around the world. I also am a featured contributor to the Fly Nubian Queen Network that's powered by Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. That YouTube channel has 581,000 subscribers. And also you can catch myself and Ryan on Indie Soup TV, a new platform launched in the US, independent content creators. And believe it or not, we're the only African Canadians on that platform. Ha ha! Ah, yes, nice. <laughs> and uh, yes, and uh, and that the reach they have over about twenty, it's about thirty content creators, and the reach of the network is over one million people. Good morning, Ryan Knight. Yeah, good day, Doctor Vibe. And for those that don't know or don't remember who Ryan Knight is, I'm one of the co-founders of the Afro Caribbean Business Network. We support. Love put his America. chest out, man. He love put on his dress. <laughs> Hey, gotta be branded, right? Gotta be branding, branding. branding. Good, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah, so we work with entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage really to figure out what stage their business is in and help them create a strategy to grow their companies exponentially. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur myself. I run a company called Detailing Nights. So we provide mobile waterless car cleaning. So we go to your house or your office, clean your car on the spot without using water and our plant-based eco-friendly cleaning supplies. And we are in recruitment mode. Mm -hmm. So if you know somebody that's a teenager or a parent that has a child, young adult that is looking for a summer job, please send them our way. We have our info session about our youth entrepreneurship program on Monday, April the 22nd at 6.30 PM. So if you're interested, I'll make sure to get the links out and I'll share that with Dr. Vibe so he can share. Yeah. We'll be able to, yeah, see if your child has the potential to start their own business. I believe they do, and I'm willing to prove it. All right. So before we go any further, let's do our Monday tradition. The Monday tradition on the morning vibe. So let we do it here. There it is there. This episode of The Morning Vibe is sponsored by the McMillan Group, providing mortgage solutions one client at a time since 1999. Buying, refinancing, or vesting, you can call them in Canada. Excuse me, at 905-813-4354, US 904-586-5636. So that is part of our Monday morning ritual. Also, we make sure we put them here. So there's a numbers, US, Canada, toll-free in North America, 866-883-0885. Website, the McMillan Group, Inc. .com, and then email, raycmcmillan at gmail.com. And big shout out to Ray and Stefan, and I forget the other gentleman's name. I think it's Andrew. I think, is it once a month or bi-weekly, they have some great conversations about investing, real estate, uh, should check them out. Actually, the next the next one that's coming up, I'm actually going to put it on the platform here. Really good information that they're sharing there, and they're doing a really good job with it. So there we go. And I know a number of people have jumped on. We're waiting to get – Carolyn hasn't arrived yet. We're waiting patiently to get Carolyn on the line. But as we get ready to do that, what has been going on in Ryan Knight's world? We haven't seen you in a bit here. Yeah, making, uh, I guess, the rounds to some of the galas – happening ah. in the in the community so who where was i the black healthcare professionals network they had their gala so How shout out that? to it was well it was very nice uh i tried to post some of the pictures on linkedin so i'll put some more up 
So shout out to Abena and Eldon Holder Jr. for the work that they were doing with the Black Healthcare pre- for, uh, Healthcare. Okay, how come they didn't come on the platform to pr- promote it? Very interesting. I thought you did. You reach out and didn't get a word back. <laughs> so here we, we, we're, we're already in beef, you and I. Okay. So <laughs> you okay. said you're gonna okay. No, hold on, on the hold show. On, you said on, you're gonna reach hold out. On, hold on. So so okay. So <laughs> okay. I hope someone loves me out here in the audience. Right. Black Health Professionals Network. I attended their their opening event. Yes. Especially Mr. Holder Jr. knows who I am. Right. I'm not saying okay. I'm doing or anything. <laughs> crickets so i guess dr vibe has to beg nah nobody said anything about begging well, okay, on the show know. i brought up that that event was happening and you said we've had them on before i'm gonna follow up to see if we can get them on again okay so two-way street if you okay, followed well, okay, up okay, and didn't okay, hear you, that, know what? you know what's interesting yes. though uh, there is the black health profession is it of, of ontario bpho i don't know but their pr re- person Reaches mm-hmm. out to me regularly. Hey, Valerie, Regu- I don't, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Re- regularly, but that's okay. I, I'm, yes. I, I have no value. That's all right. No that, problem. No, no, no. Uh, no, but okay. You do, you do, you do your right. gala. You so how was your gala? And they didn't respond. Then I would take that and say yeah. yes. Okay. Maybe. All right. You but, okay? Gala. Only because you said it. It's not that. Hey, I'm not making up stuff. You okay. said it. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll rewind the tape, the digital yeah. tape. All right. So what <laughs> and, else? Uh, what else, else was I? Where else was I? Oh, so liftoff, which is the um, it's C C A W R. They're in Waterloo, Kitchener area. Okay. And I think it's Caribbean Canadian Association of Waterloo region. Yeah. So they had their liftoff event where they have cohorts of entrepreneurs going through their program and then they do kind of a celebration event. So that's where I was Friday evening. So Friday was that. And then Saturday was the, no, was that? No, it was Wednesday. Was it Wednesday or Thursday? <laughs> it was during the week. It, it threw me off April the 10th. I was like, I'm supposed to be somewhere this evening. That was the healthcare professionals one. And speaking of that too, they did give away Healthcare Heroes Awards. Hold on just so, a moment. You yeah, keep yeah. on going. Carolyn's oh. calling me. Yeah, so they gave away Healthcare Heroes Awards. And I apologize. I don't remember all three winners. Actually, let me pull it up because one of the winners was from an organization called the Olive Branch. And I'm not sure if you know much about the Olive Branch, but they do, yes, Marcy. No, nope, that's not her. Marcy Gray was from a different organization. And then Dr. Onye, she won as well. Why am I spacing on the Olive Branch one? Let me see. From the Olive Branch. Oh, no. So everyone just give, Ryan, you keep on going because for some Mm -hmm. reason, Carolyn has the wrong link. I'm emailing it to right now, but keep on going. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I think it's Marcy from the Olive Branch. But yeah, a great organization that supports women with breast cancer. So they won one of the awards. I'm looking through because they had a Enterprise of Excellence Award. They had what other award? The Community Healer Award. And one other award here. Oh, I think this is it. But my thing is blurry. Ah. <laughs> Anyhow, Sweet. so okay. it was a nice awards night and Good. fully sponsored by CIBC, I saw. So it was at the CIBC Square downtown Toronto on Bay Street. So very nice venue, how they set it up. So it was well done. Good. And then the liftoff one on Friday evening. And then, so I went to uh, my alumni Sheridan College. They had their uh, student union kind of I guess another gala. They uh, yeah, they did call it gala night. So gala, uh, <laughs> but it was funny because I don't know if you've seen the Chris Rock special where um, he talks about you don't want to be the old guy in the club. Yeah. And so I walk in because they had their dinner and I came there after the liftoff event, and so it was when they opened up the dance floor, and I walked in. I was like, I think I'm the old guy at the club. 
So even though I'm an alumni and even though I'm in the Hall of Fame, I was like, I think this is for the kids. So I just, you know, said hi to the organizers and said, you know, I think I'm going to call it a night and just went home. So, yes. Okay. But it was, look, the kids look like they're having lots of fun. Good. So it was good. Cool. And then cool. Sunday, we just shut it down, got to play some baseball with my son, Christian. So he got his bat and ball. So we got to play. And this is the first time I think he's played baseball. That was my uh, oh my God, sport of choice. So yes, I was excited to see. And he got some good hits in. So he doesn't, he's not uh, totally incapable. So no <laughs> he's problem. eight, so we're going to get him set up. But I think he's doing soccer, not official baseball yet i think we'll wait a bit for to get him into like an actual league but yeah he had fun all right so a few things let's uh put it up here so good morning destiny savory haven't seen you well i hope all things are fine with you detox season yes carol as she, as someone says detox season carolyn is coming to the green room this is oh, beautiful <laughs> uh frequency event promotion says it was great seeing you at the leg up symposium that me? Yeah, okay. Sorry that I missed your co interview with Louis Marsh. I'm sure the conversation, yes, it was epic. And haven't seen you for a while. Tim Frey. We hey. mentioned your name just recently. We got to get you back on the show, Tim Frey. We have to get you on the show. Yes, Tim Frey. We need you on the show. So, uh, so Frequency Event Promotions mentioned up the Leg Up Symposium. What an event last Friday during the day down at the Marriott downtown. Uh, I hadn't been downtown in a long time, especially mm -hmm. during the daytime. Uh, but great event and all ded dedicated to the Wells Symposium sponsored by C uh, not CFBC, TD. The, like TD had three wow. tables worth of people there. Nice, nice. Full entourage of people. Uh, saw Christopher, saw Danny Stone. Louis, I was I was asked to do a on stage a conversation with Elder Louis Marsh for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and then a little bit after that, I hosted a conversation about investments with a re representative from TD, who also has investments in real estate. Another gentleman who does capital wealth capital management. And another gentleman who's an entrepreneur. So that was a nice half hour conversation. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I was so blessed because the day before I had a student that was saying oh i can help document your day the day before i said oh i can't make it out feeling well so i have to make a big shout out to nikki g i'm not gonna get not gonna give her full name and she said oh, i'll do it for you so she used my ipad recorded both conversations documentation family yes yes and it's funny i did an ig live from the table i was sitting at just showing some of my notes and I don't know what it is. Like, I don't do Instagram that much live, but people were like liking it, <laughs> liking it, liking it. So nice. I've got to take my mentors, say you got to do more of those things. Mm -hmm. So that uh that was going on. So that was a that was a really good event. I was there from I was there from about 12 o'clock till nine. Oh wow, full full it, it was a full event. Uh, Agape from CCE was there. C E C E was there uh and sorry which organization was leg open? up leg up oh, okay gotcha. yes leg up so big shout out to david griffith the founder and also a huge shout out to simone jennifer smith who put all of like the logistics all together nice hotel and mm. when i left i said yeah this is why i don't come downtown 33 dollars parking oh man that is 33 wrong. but that's why you're a business owner there you go but yeah. uh yeah but we met some wonderful people had some great entrepreneurs down there and there's already some post conversations happening with one of the organizations that i mentioned already that's happening this week so there you go and my apologies it's lila springer from the olive I, branch of hope she's the name, one that won the award that name sounds familiar oh yeah, okay but there, who else is there? Uh, Stacy Ann Berry. Do you know Stacy Ann? That name, that name definitely sounds familiar. Yeah. She was there. Okay. Few so, others. Dr. Tachi, what is up? Dr. Tachi was on primetime Saturday with Aisha on Saturday night. They were throwing it down. And actually, gonna before we go to oh, break, no. and ask, she was, and we talked about Indie Soup Media already. And there, Car Bro says, Advice on kidney. Okay, we're gonna get to this already. See, people are waiting for Carolyn to get on. Any advice on kidney health? And go 
Freakins, yeah, it was a great event. Yeah, it was a great event. Food was wonderful, but the people nice, were even nice. better. Saw David Click Cox there. Hadn't seen him in a long time. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. And a lot of entrepreneurs and conversations were being had. Serena Will says, good morning from the DMV. Watching you all on my big screen today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going big screen on the DMV. We're going big screen on the DMV. Okay, before we go to break, because... Carolyn is waiting patiently and driving, and a lot of people are here for her. Ryan Knight, legacy of OJ Simpson, talk to me. Oh boy, uh, <laughs> that's why I wish you would have came on on Friday, but you weren't here. Yeah, you know it. Unfortunately, I it, the way people will celebrate his death really spoke volumes. And again, I know it had that divide where that court case really caused blacks versus whites. And then it was like a victory for the black community. Then it started feeling like books that he wrote about it just made, uh, made him feel very icky to be able to support him and got arrested again for I think assaults and trying to get his memorabilia back. So the legacy of OJ Simpson definitely started strong, had a complete hiccup in the middle and then his by his own actions fell apart at the end that nobody was even paying attention when he pa passed away like i didn't hear that he was sick i didn't hear that he had cancer so he had totally fallen out of the limelight of our our collective thought so it's and, and it's sad that he went out like that because he could have used that as a second chance to really build up you know build we are forgiving people if if that happened and you know he was found not guilty yes he was guilty in the civil case but if he used the time to then rebuild his character and come back and ask forgiveness i think he would have got it but he didn't choose that path and he ended up going to prison and then getting released to no uh no real accolades so yeah it's unfortunate but the way people celebrated oh lord have mercy sometimes <laughs> people's true nature comes out and they don't realize like instinctively when they hear news and then they immediately cheer. I was like, you guys have some, in you have to work on some inside yeah. stuff. So, all right. Well, interesting. Uh, so Dr. Tazi says his, his legacy is tarnished. Exactly. Also shouts out her fellow soror, Serena Wills. I'll be very quick on this before we go to break. I think that an, an area that not too many people like, O.J. Simpson was a billion-dollar industry. Gotcha. Right? You yeah. look at how many eyeballs watch the car trace, how many eyeballs watch the trial, and advertisers on all those networks. And they did a, new, a show about it. Like, they created a full... There was a, there was a mini, mini series about that. Right? So if yeah. you if all... It'd be very interesting to see how much money O.J. Simpson made directly and made for other properties during his life. Absolutely. Billion dollars e easily. Yeah. Billion dollars easily. We can go deeper into that, but I, it's it's like that. I would yeah. say if you really, if you really want to get intel on it, watch the re replay of Primetime Saturday this past mm -hmm. Saturday. So if you follow me on YouTube or on Facebook or LinkedIn, Dr. Tachi and Aisha broke it down for like an hour. Oh, wow. I love it. I'm going to check that. That's so They good. broke it down like Fierce, our hour. So definitely check out. So we've got Ryan's opinion on that. We've seen the gala tour is continuing. Uh, <laughs> Serena and Dr. Tachi, he's, he's back in circulation again. So where's the cape? <laughs> and, and crown, please. And thank you. Cape and promise. Crown, so you can we promise. He comes come in. So we're holding you up to that. All right. So what we're going to do is we take a quick break. Carolyn is driving, but her smile is in the green room. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come back in a few moments with Carolyn. She's going to break it down in regards to belly belly <laughs> and you're the belly, fat. belly fat Love huh? oh busting belly fat right busting belly mean. fat all right so we're back in two minutes <laughs> you know and, and that's what i feel like you feel like you're the harry tubman of the mind i am i feel like i'm the hair I, I i'm one of the harry tubmans of intelligent black people like i want to liberate y'all from like being left behind and ignored <laughs> and, and it'll blip no really the yeah. rappers get all the attention you know, seriously, does anybody else feel this way? Like, like ignorant black people 
they'll be all up, you know, getting all the headlines on the shade room. Overly and sexualized black o- folks. Over, like the, the, the twerkers and the, you know, just just people that, you know, don't always represent the best of us. You know, the diversity. You know, like people like Dr. Vibe. Like everybody should know about people like Dr. Vibe. Dr. Really Vibe, is, he's trying to do good work for, for black people. So Dr. Vibe from Toronto. Good to see you, my brother. Uh, Dr. Vibe. Everybody follow Dr. Vibe. He has a great great show he's very good at what he does and i have a lot of respect for him the men who are also doing the same thing i see dr vibe in here he's a great brother everybody should follow dr vibe by the way he's a smart brother in canada and we need to follow smart people so follow dr vibe if you see him in the chat and dr vibe say your name in the chat so people can see you i want you to click on his name and i want you to go follow him please because i want these i want these men and women that are doing the right things to get the support they deserve uh, hey, Dr. Vibe, how you doing, brother? Again, I like I always do. I got to say everybody should go follow Dr. Vibe. He's got a great show. Dr. Vibe, I know Dr. Vibe's got a kingdom because I see your channel. I see you pouring into that every day. Uh, everybody should follow Dr. Vibe, by the way. Look him up, Dr. Vibe, V-I-B-E. He's a great friend of me and my wife, and I love this guy. Okay, so let me um, hop into this. What's up, Dr. Vibe? How you doing? Everybody, if you see Dr. Vibe in the chat, everybody go follow the Dr. Vibe show. Dr. Vibe is a real smart brother and a, a, a good human being. I like the guy a lot, and, and he's very intelligent, and uh, I think everyone should pay attention to what he's got going on. We got to shine the spotlight on the intelligent black people out here that are really doing the good work. Uh, don't just pay attention to the rappers and the celebrities. You know, a lot of these people are losers. Your true winners are your people in your community that are really having your back, uh, you know, helping us to have stronger families and a stronger community. So Dr. Bob is in that category. So you might see the Dr. Bob show in this chat. If you see him, please go follow him. OK. All right. So anyway. OK, we are back. So a few things before we get the star of the conversation on the show. So I I did something I love to do and I tell people you got to do it, got to document. So after the panel discussion, Two of the panelists gave me a video testimonial right after. Love it. Nice. Right man. after. So before we go any further, subscribe to the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube and hit the notification button. Please subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Also, if you want to advertise your business product or service on any of the platforms that we are on, please email me dr period vibe at the dr vibe com. And also join our Discord group. Email me at dr. Period at the dr. V i b e s h o w dot com, and if you want to see if you can keep keep up with the Gala King, this is where you can get a hold of him. Website, LinkedIn, Instagram, and email address. All right. Do you know what time it is, Ryan? Yes, it's time to increase the guilt. On the food <laughs> <of your eating. laughs> <laughs> increase, increase the guilt. What a, what a way of just introducing Carolyn. It's the oh, John, the lady of guilt, right? <laughs> the late, maybe that's her tagline. The smiling lady of guilt. Yes, uh, and redemption. redemption. Yes. Redemption. Oh, by the way, okay, Ryan. Before you, when yes. was the last time you had oxtail? Oh man, that was Tuesday. Up. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, no more, no less on that yeah. intro. <laughs> Carolyn Nicole is on. Hello, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. How are you? I'm great. I'm pulled over just so you know I'm not driving. I'm I'm on a long drive back from Sudbury to Toronto. So oh, oh wow. gotcha. yeah. Left left rather early this morning, but pulled over. I'm very safe. Engines off. Good, good, good. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this already. Cindy Lee says, guilt or conviction? <laughs> in regards to <laughs> we confessional. Fitness IQ like Cam goes, busted, Ryan. <laughs> and then says, morning, everyone. Yes. Oh, yes. my good. I lo- and Serena <laughs> says, let's go, Carolyn Nicole. Let's go. Love it. <laughs> let's go. What has been going on in your world? Ah, oh, everything. Um, what has been going on in my world? It's It's been a really busy couple of weeks. We're getting ready for the expo. We also have a retreat starting this weekend. We just finished doing a cooking demo. So my head's a little spinny. I'm not really sure if I'm going left or right, but I am staying the course. So yeah, it's been, it's been a, yeah, that's it. That's our our expo. You've got to get your tickets. You know, we have, I think now almost 
40 vendors, small businesses, plant-based products. I mean, from hair, skin, nails, uh, whether it's cupcakes or whether it's uh, tofu or whether it's like nuts, you can turn into some sort of healthy fake meat, clothing, everything. Everything is there. Nice. It's incredible. Yeah, only $20 a ticket. So get your tickets, go on Eventbrite. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, awesome. Um, it's at the Chestnut uh, Hill Recreation Center in Pickering. Mm. So I kind of really like that this is not a Toronto thing. There is a huge Durham population of people that don't always want to drive to Toronto. So everybody's coming from everywhere, but this is in Durham and it's going to be a huge event. There's a uh, kid zone. So if you've got kids, just bring them. There's so much stuff for kids to do there. There's inspiring testimonies and we're going to be doing live cooking demos like $20 and kids come in free. This is an event of a lifetime. Nice. All right. So how much planning is, you know, it's interesting because when I first met Carolyn, she was talking about this. This is a while back and now it's yes. getting closer to reality. By the way, how is your dear sister doing? Uh, she's so busy. Ah. <laughs> yes. You think? Yeah, she's, a, we've been planning this for almost a full year. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, very, very, very excited. And the vendors are phenomenal. All of these small businesses that like bless their hearts, you know, these are some companies that it's like they're closing their store on Sunday so they can be at the expo. I mean, wow. I just need the entire community to come and support these small businesses. Wow. Excellent. excellent. Wow. This is fantastic. So what? Are you expecting to see Ryan lives in Durham? So we're expecting him there. May 5th, one to five. Carve it out of the <laughs> hey, day. We will pop by. There. Absolutely. I think it will be great for the kids to come in and see. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. How are how are things with energy doing? Uh the energy shock is wonderful. We are um we are uh just gearing up also for our last two retreats of the spring. So that's keeping us busy. And uh, the food side is up and going. Uh, our juicing team is very busy because everybody wants to spring detox. So yeah, yes, lots yes, of good yes. things going on. And we're planning a mission trip to Cuba in July. So wow. there's just, there's so much happening, but it's all really, really wonderful, um, positively impacting community things. Okay, so here I've got two words for you: sleep when question mark. All right, I think we lost her for a second. Oh no! Oh, 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 we came in. I know yeah, it's all right, but yeah, there's. Oh, there I am. Sorry. There we go. So <laughs> I was before we lost you for a second. Sleep when question mark. Yeah. So my <laughs> life's not crazy like that. Uh, the the. I, I cut it off like usually around 9 30, 10 o'clock, the latest. Like, there's no, you know, my eating doesn't stop, my exercise doesn't stop, my walks don't stop. That's just like part of ingrained in my day and my life. Uh, I will say, when I come to Toronto, I'm definitely not motivated as I am at home to like go for my daily walks. I don't know, the buildings. The pollution, the cars, they just don't call my name. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I get you. I get you. Well, but I hit the gym. <laughs> well, good. Good. So today. Yeah, today. Belly fat. Belly fat. What's the... <laughs> raise your hand out there if you're struggling with any belly fat. Well, raise, your belly. Raise, <laughs> your belly. raise your belly. Raise your belly. If you can feel it while you're sitting, it's a problem. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's real. So belly fat, and how do we get rid of this belly fat? And where does it come from? And what is it doing to us? And is it a big deal? Is it normal, especially as you cross over the age of 50? Is that normal, right? Like, this is important to know. So, um, so basically, when it comes to belly fat, or, or fat on the body, um, the reality is, is that um, depending on your genetic disposition, that definitely has a role to play where fat is stored in the system. Mm. 
So, you know, you'll see some people, I mean, especially if you, if you look at certain females where it's like, they might be bigger thighed or they might be bigger busted or, and you'll also see their mom has that same figure or something like that. So genetic, genetics definitely has a role to play as to where fat is stored on the body. But there's something about this common factor of belly fat um, just ripping through humanity. And the reality is, is that we're seeing this even happen in young people. Like you're seeing teenagers with bellies. Like that never used to be the case. Uh, right, right. So um, it's very important to understand that it's actually quite simple. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, the, the myth has been busted years ago that you can do a million crunches and sit-ups and push-ups. You're not necessarily, even though you're physically attacking the stomach in your exercise, that's not necessarily going to get rid of your belly fat. Belly fat, the long and short of it, is the storage of extra calories. So if you've got extra calories that you're not using, it's going to store. Now, why is it storing a lot in the belly? That's the problem. So whether you're having too much carbs, whether you're having too much sugar, even if you're having too much meat, meat turns to fat in the body. So if you're consuming more than you're actually physically burning, then you're going to get the storage of fat. And because it's food, that's ultimately what happens is that your body always follows the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So because you're already there, the food is already there. And I'm going to touch on this because there's also another reason why it stores in the fat. But because it's already there, uh, that's, that's the place of storage. And your digestive system actually uh, works harder than any other part in your body. Your digestive system actually gets hit with uh, toxins um, first, it gets hit with all of this stuff first. So your body produces a lot of protective mechanisms and it has this huge visceral fat layer in the stomach that no other place in your body does. So it's almost like oh. fat is drawn to that area because, um, so you have subcutaneous fat, you can just, you know, pinch your body. That's the fat you feel. But then you have visceral fat you can't see that fat. Well, I shouldn't say you can't see that fat. You can surely see that fat, but you can't feel that fat. Interesting. But that is fat that is creating most of your belly fat. And I got to tell you that the reality is, is that it's quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. So the problem with, viscer uh, with this visceral fat is that it's biologically active it actually almost acts in your body as an organ. So when you have fat around the stomach, um, that means that you have a high level of visceral fat and because it's biologically active, it's actually releasing hormone inhibitors and that is extremely dangerous. It's also releasing certain toxins that because your portal vein connected to your digestive system goes right into your liver this becomes a problem because your liver is getting this influx of lipids, this influx of toxins, all seeping from your belly fat. And that's problematic because that's, that's the result of high cholesterol, fatty liver, diabetes. All of this begins or can be um, exaggerated um, because you've got belly fat. Oh boy. And is that something that I guess you could start seeing symptoms before you see the fat or do you typically, if it gets around there, do you see it, your belly start growing right away? You know, you always ask such really good questions. Yeah. So generally the- Hold belly on a second. Are you saying <laughs> I don't ask good questions? You, you know, you ask great questions, but you guys like, you guys think very differently. Yeah, well, you guys, you that's guys that's that's why it's that's why we're the that's why we're the morning vibe. No <laughs> right? Yeah, right? what a vibe. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I Go love ahead. it. <laughs> so, uh generally the belly fat the belly fat will come not always, 
but the belly fat will come. Um, but diabetes and cholesterol has already started because mm. many times the belly fat comes and we don't really recognize that it's so much belly fat until it be comes to a point where now it's like, oh, I need to do something about it. Right. But before it was not so much of a flat stomach, you needed to do something about it because it is abnormal to not have a flat stomach. I'm not suggesting we need to walk around with a six pack, mm -hmm. but it is not normal to have a pudgy belly. That means your body's storing fat. That means you're consuming. There's two reasons. I'm going to get to the second reason, but that means that you're consuming more calories than your body is burning. So something has to change. So yes, exercise is a key. And when you exercise, your body's taking fat from everywhere. But number two, we need to like recognize how many calories am I consuming? Because I'm probably consuming more calories than my body's needing if it's storing this fat. Yeah, that makes sense. So just a number of things. I want to revert back to something you said earlier, and you're reading my alleged mind, which could be a da dangerous thing, <laughs> about how many young people, I'm more and more young, I'm seeing that are obese. Ooh, right. That right. is scaring me. Yeah. Why? 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 Why is that happening in your, what do you feel the reason is for that? Yes, unfortunately, our young people are so inactive. Our age of technology has caused our young people to be sitting in front of screens so, so often. I mean, the truth is socialization used to be bike riding and throwing a ball around. Now young people sit around, they might even be outside, but they're sitting down and they're just talking on their phones, sharing pictures, using devices. They're mm. not up, they're not bike riding, they're not running around. You don't see street hockey like you used to see street hockey. You so don't see the basketball courts full like you used to. They've cut down recess. They've eliminated gym. You only get phys ed like twice a week in school. So we're just, we're not, we're not burning calories and it's way too easy and unfortunately inexpensive to stop at your local Tim's or whatever, grab a bagel, get an ice cap. Like they're consuming such saturated fats and processed foods like never before. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the two, it's alarming of what's happening to our young people. They're, they're not active. Another conversation point I have for you, and, and people are watching live, feel free to ask questions. There is one that was from earlier on. I'll get to in a moment. But the, the depth that you just went into, I have a feeling most people who have doctors, they don't go into that depth. Mm. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, why, your mom why did, has diabetes. Okay, why did you give that response you when you diabetes. said, of course not? <laughs> okay, when you said, of course not, is, there was a reason why you said, of course not. You want to expand on that? Well, I'm still a little bit, the jury's out a little bit for me because I've never been to medical school, okay? So I, I went to a holistic nutritional school. So I don't know everything that doctors learn in their seven to nine years of education, Okay, but so the jury's kind of out for me. I don't want to make a full judgment call, but I, I'm, I'm quite confounded that the information is there. I mean, somebody could search deep enough on the Internet. Of course, I have some really good medical books that I use at home to get a lot of my information, but it's not like the information isn't available. Mm -hmm. So for somebody to learn and understand, like just basically um, your like the difference between your visceral fat and, um, you know, the subcontinaceous fat, like just understanding that and knowing that your portal veins connected from your stomach to your liver. And when you have too much visceral fat, your body releases those lipids, lipids, sends them through transporters, and it goes inside your liver and it actually blocks your insulin receptors because it goes in the bloodstream. It creates fatty liver and cholesterol. I mean, doctors will say lose weight, but they won't go through the depth of, you know, talking about the calories and yeah, like encouraging the exercise, <laughs> like what's actually happening. What, what happens is 
you know what? You came last time. You you told me your dad has diabetes, or I know your daddy has diabetes. You have diabetes now. It's running in your family. Here's your medication. Not like, come on, Joe. Let's right. get to the gym. Let's stop eating too many calories. Like, I don't know if doctors don't have time for it. They don't really believe the nutrition piece or that's just not in their best interest because medication actually makes them more money and perks in the background. So uh, jury's out for me because I know there are still some good doctors, but I do feel like our doctors, and I'm sorry for some listening are probably the good doctors, but in my opinion, our doctors are the biggest drug dealers there are on the planet. Okay, <laughs> let's let's not let's not put it out there. Okay, <laughs> I knew I knew you were gonna go there. I just had a feel. I just had to, just sort of. It's hard. It's it. heartbreaking because medication has so many horrible side effects. Like if you look at metformin, metformin, uh, and you know Janumet, these are not any better. They're 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 basically using the same formula as a metformin and a Zempic. Like these medications literally eat away at your muscle tissue. Like they literally do that. They literally destroy the lining of your stomach. So this is problematic. Never mind, we're not even talking about what it does to the liver and kidneys. This is problematic for these, especially men getting into their, you know, their 40s and 50s where already your body's depleting. But it's like you have these saggy muscles and it's it's not necessarily because you're not eating enough protein. It's because mm -hmm. your medication is literally eating away at your muscle tissue. I mean, right. that's not discussed in the doctor's office. I mean, you could avoid that whole thing and have a great figure even when you're sick. It's it's quite disturbing to me the side effects of medication. Uh, statin drugs for cholesterol are so dangerous. Mm -hmm. But wow. anyway, um, and these toxins from these medications build up in the stomach, create inflammation, causing your body to hold more fat in your middle. And that's the second part I wanted to talk to you about for mm -hmm. this whole belly fat thing. All right, let me catch up on this here from a little while back serena wills hashtag gala king dr tati hashtag gala king uh good uh opal inspire says good morning all make sure you follow her creations artistically on her youtube channel frequency event promotion says he'll be a vendor as well at carolyn's event yes he will uh, be um let's see dr tati goes sheesh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Serena goes, I totally agree about kids not being as active between schools, cutting back on PE and kids sitting out after school, still sitting still after school and on weekends is not good. Uh, car bro underscore says they don't with Dr. Google. We're understanding how our body works and the purpose of the organs and how they connect. Now, going back to a little bit earlier on, because I don't want to forget car bro, the voice is, you'll forget, you'll forget my question. Car bro <laughs> has this question. Any advice on kidney health, which again is related mm. to this conversation, microscopic hematur I what's hematuria? I don't I can, those are words. I'm on I'm on my phone and um, the it. screen is so it's small, really small I can't see Pro that word. Proteinuria and some white oh, cells. Goodness. Scan yeah. scan scheduled for additional probing. No system, no system symptoms. Mm. Thank you. Okay. So any advice, because uh, I know this is probably related to the belly fat, kidney health. Yeah, so when it comes to kidneys uh, and kidney health, a couple things are really important is that, uh, first of all, I, I hope you'll reach out to me and do a consultation because I need to understand what your creatinine levels are. I need to understand what your GFR is functioning at, like what your kidney percentage is functioning at. Uh, and your potassium levels, because the reality is, is that when kidneys are being compromised, uh, a couple of things are happening. Your kidneys are filtering out 200 liters of blood every day. So there's something going on in the blood system that's inhibiting the kidneys from doing their filtration process. So if you're showing your white blood cells low, um, you know, th there, there's something going on. Maybe there's too much acidity happening in the butt, blood. Maybe your body's constantly pulling calcium, um, bringing it into the kidneys, and that's creating detriment. Um, but there's a number of things you can do. I have a great success rate at bringing your kidney level function up um, 
I wouldn't say very quickly, but rather quickly um, and getting people to avoid dialysis or kidney disease. So you'd have to talk to me because depending on what the issue is, um, is going to depend on what I recommend. Okay. Nice, nice. Ryan, Ryan, any comments so far? No, I, I know with um, the doctor's comments and them just pushing, pushing the drugs and it makes you think, is it just laziness or do they actually not know or do they have an agenda? Like there's so many different paths that you could take now, all three being bad. But when we're looking at, okay, do we need to bring our own information to our doctors now? And wouldn't it be in their better interest to be our cheerleaders? Like to say like, hey, let's get you exercise and let's get you some good food and then come back. Like I would want to go to my doctor before yeah. we go, before Kellen asks that, answers that, two things. First of all, um, she mentioned about consultation, special offer you $49 instead of 110 when you mention the Morning Vibe or Dr. Vibe when you contact her at info at energyshockjuicebar.com. And let me say, absolutely, it's worth the investment. And I think also, before you go to a doctor, I would go to her. I'll be 100% honest. Because what she tells you and what your doctor's telling you are going to be two totally different things. I'll be totally honest. Mm. I went to see Carolyn and I did a 30-day plant-based diet. When I went to my doctor, he said, when I told him, I said, that's good for you. He said he didn't want anything of it. So that's my doctor <laughs> telling me, oh, well, good for you. He said it sort of sarcastically. I'm going... All right. You see, now he's a nice guy. And all he was, that's not me, but I just said, so yeah. I would make a suggestion. <laughs> you see Carolyn first, and I actually have to re up with Carolyn. We have to talk about some other things mm. down the road. But uh, so getting back to Ryan's question, if you remember it after I rudely interrupted, um, what well, do you that have was the big piece? It's like when you go to the doctor, you already know they're going to prescribe you a, one of two things. It's either uh, they'll tell you to change your diet, but they don't tell you how, or exactly. they'll give you pills to take. And even with psychiatry, like I went to a therapist and they just want to push pills on you. It's like, yeah, I just want to talk to somebody. Just listen yeah, to me. Exactly. I always enjoy it. So it would make me want to go to my doctor more if they were more that cheerleader of your health. Like, Hey, this is a way to now get better exercise and then come back and let me know. But I'm curious, so do you coach doctors at all? Like, are there doctors that you encounter that you can be like, hey. Do you really think doctors want to hear I'm from her? Do you I think doctors want to hear from her? Uh, actually, um, uh, there's a couple doctors that I work with that send me clients. They, oh, um, you okay. know, I believe that there is a place for Western medicine. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to change your diet, then you have to go on medication. There's just if, if you if you're if you're not going to change your lifestyle and your diet, right. then, you know, uh, uncontrolled blood sugar, uncontrolled cholesterol, uncontrolled high blood pressure is dangerous in the system. So if you're not ready to make a change, then yeah, medication is your lot in life. That's what you have to do. But if you were not born with it, there's no reason why you, there, there's no reason why you have to keep this disease about yourself. Type two diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol. These are re, these are lifestyle issues. They are 100 percent reversible. Right. Now, I will say that you could get to a certain um, depth of disease where your diabetes has created neuropathy whether it's retina neuropathy or whether it's neuropathy in your legs, where that gets to a point where it can't be reversed. So you could do so much damage with your blood sugar that you've created issues that can't be reversed. But these are diseases that are brought on through lifestyle. So that's ultimately what we teach. And I do feel very blessed that I have two, three doctors really that I work with very closely, they almost have to do it secretly. So I'll never say their names online, but they, we have an understanding. They say, call Carolyn, call Carolyn and come back and see me in three months. But right. do you know what these doctors have to do? They have to write the prescription and tell the client to fill it because a doctor has a certain amount of quota of medication that they have to give out yearly 
or yeah. they will lose their license. And I know a doctor who lost his license because he was showing people how to change their diet and didn't need to prescribe that much medication. Wow. Yeah. So there, there's a, there's, wow. a, there's a real, real Look criminal for the three. activity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Yeah. Clarissa says, my husband just got off the cholesterol pill. His doctor was fighting against it. <laughs> All because of Carolyn. Testimonial. Oh, no. Not because of Wait, me. See, because the, you the, guys the, did the, it. Right? And Serena goes, a quota over medication. What? That's wild. <laughs> oh, man. So getting, getting back to the belly fat then. <laughs> yes. In regard, what, so inactivity, how mm -hmm. long? So what are the core causes? Like, I'm going to put them out here and you tell me if I'm off base. Sugar, hereditary, lack of exercise, any other things? Yeah, so it's sugar, it's protein, it's carbs. Okay, so it's not just sugar. It's basically, if we were to summarize it, it's too much calories, too much inactivity. And the third one, which I know I sound like a broken record, but is stress. So any kind of inflammation, let me not, let me say that again. So when the body has an inflammatory response or when cortisol hits an area, your body's natural mechanism for inflammation is patching fat and holding fat in that area because it's very protective. Fat is very protective and drawing water to that area. So the, the problem is too, you know, there's the book out there called Wheat Belly, which I haven't read, I, I've read parts of it, but the long and short of it is that wheat causes inflammation and it hits the stomach. So because there's inflammation in the stomach, the body for sure is going to pull fat and draw fat around the middle. When we're stressed out, we have a vagus nerve. It goes from the brain, through the heart, the lungs, but it ends in the stomach. So when you're stressed out, you're worried, you're bothered, or you've just had a late night, if you're releasing cortisol, that cortisol ends in the stomach. It's dangerous. It causes a lot of inflammation. It eats away at the stomach lining. So what does your body do? It patches fat around your middle to protect you from dangerous dumps of cortisol, from the wheat that keeps hitting the stomach lining. So yes, you might be thin as a pin everywhere else and you've got a stomach, you're going to walk into my office. I'm going to tell you, you are stressed out, or maybe you just have too much wheat, but something's stressing you out. So that's the other problem okay. is that stress uh, hits the stomach first and your body patches fat around the middle to protect you from that. So even if you're not eating too many calories and even if you're super active, but you can't get rid of your belly, check your stress level. That's, that is great information. Dr. Patrick, she says, Carolyn changes lives. Yes, yes. Uh, car bro underscore says, plant-based protein ideas. Serena Will says, I know mine is inactivity guilty. I'm being honest. <laughs> Lorna King Bob says, you need to realize that some people cannot articulate what's wrong with them. The medical doctors are taught differently, so they very rarely advertise any other medical help out of their realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to pull the, the juries out for me on the whole medical system because I think that there's a level with doctors that they actually don't know. I mean, nutrition is an elective in medical school. You study medication for seven to nine years. So I think that they get to some degree that nutrition helps, but I I honestly am convinced that they don't fully, totally know. But it wouldn't be far from their reach if they studied a little bit more. But I, I think that they're just so ingrained with uh, medication that, you know, I, as I'm so ingrained with nutrition, I don't always look at other avenues of other things. Well, it's interesting because doctors don't really get a scorecard. Like who is following up with patients after we go to see them and tracking are we actually getting better? Because if there was an incentive or if there was a penalty for going to see your doctor and over time getting worse, I think they would have to do that caused them to lose their license instead of you're getting better, but them not giving you pills, they lose their license over that. There's a, 
is a so mismatch backwards. of yeah, the carrot and the stick is mismatched here. So very interesting, and hopefully some medical professionals hear this so that they can start <laughs> looking into this because that doesn't sound how our medical system should be working. K K Carolyn, let me ask, how much from your lens has belly fat become an increased concern since the pandemic? Um, I would I would say that it's not just belly fat since the pandemic. It's a major rise in obesity, period. Major rise in obesity. Mm -hmm. People are catching on and getting better now that things have opened up and they're back at the gyms. But like two years of damage is really hard to reverse. I can't tell you how many people when I do the intakes, I, I hear that since the pandemic, since the pandemic, since the pandemic, I mean, I hear that over and over again. Uh, anxiety levels, super high, uh, obesity, terrible. So all of this, of course, you know, comes, uh, adds an addition to the belly fat, but I've been seeing belly fat on the rise, like major, major over the last 10 years, just like, you know, cause like I have, I have, um, young adult children and just seeing their friends with bellies was weird to me. Right. It was just weird to me, but I was seeing that when they were like, you know, 15, 12, 13, 16 years old. So I've been seeing this rise where, you know, we didn't see that you always had the chubby kid, but you know, he was just eating too much garbage. But for the most part, you didn't see belly fat like that you know, in young people that just, that wasn't seen. It was awkward to me. And this started like 10 years ago. And that was the rise of these whole crazy devices and pulling phys ed out of school. When we go out and shop at the grocery store, and actually this goes back to something you and I talked about a long time ago. I still want to do it. I'd like to do an IG series with you in regards to how to how to and how not to shop at the grocery store right well they should change the aisles so that <laughs> the, the title says big belly or <laughs> little belly like if you actually want to know yeah, what said, said by, said, this is all being said by the the, the gentleman who had oxtail last tuesday this hey, is all listen, from the guy who had oxtail last tuesday i have an instagram handle the audience the uh, the oxtail hunter needs to be getting oxtail every so often. <laughs> but but our average grocery store, you may, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems that a high percentage of the product in our the average grocery store is not good for us. So here's the rule, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really simple. As soon as you have to open a package, there's a problem. Ah. That's it. That's a short and fast rule. Even wow. if it says vegan and gluten-free, as soon as you have to open a package, there's a compromise. There's very, 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 very few exceptions. But the way you want to eat is, you know, in my opinion and from my study and experience is a plant-based whole foods diet. That means that you're eating your nuts, your beans, your grains, your seeds, your fruits, your vegetables. That's where you want to be. Soon as you have to un take open that flap, open that plastic, yeah, there, there's there's always going to be a compromise because there's certain stabilizers and preservatives that have to go into that product that will make it shelf life stable. And so that that is the ultimate reality of going into the grocery store. Like spend your time in the produce aisle. That's where you want to be. Right, right. See, it'll be renamed from produce aisle to little belly. Little <laughs> belly aisle. Go here. <laughs> <laughs> little belly aisle. <laughs> Serena goes stress and activity inactivity i noticed mine during the more during the pandemic i was overstressed and inactive time to make a shift she also says that's nuts that nutrition is an elective in medical school and after so many years of <laughs> study they could have you know, been proper all right nutrition and elective that's rubbish <laughs> this is why there's so many problems they also need to make health communication mandatory because many doctors don't know how to speak to people. Mm. Exactly. Fitness IQ Camp says, LOL, Ryan, enough lawsuits would come about oh. uh, about big belly and small belly. 
Hey, Tari, we have to get honest in these grocery stores. All right. Like, lies uh, are too much. Good morning, Roger. Hey, hey, Roger. What is up? Lorna says, people have to change their behavior with food. Carolyn is excellent. As a nurse, people are so depressed they don't know where to turn. Lifestyle changes are needed. People are dying from a lack. You didn't finish. All right. And then uh, Roger says, I think doctors prescribe medicine because the average person is not disciplined to follow a healthy diet. A hundred percent. I would agree with that. Yep. Lillian Beth says, don't, don't shop when you're hungry. Everything looks good <laughs> when you're hungry. It affects your choices. Yes, the big belly aisle looks real. <laughs> right. People like the ride. Serena's going, Ryan. But, <laughs> but yeah, well, I think I'd add to that. Never sh shop for food when you're hungry, mm -hmm. angry, lonely, or tired. <laughs> there you yeah. go. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I don't think those are, are good times. So, it, so Carolyn says, if you have to open a package, you're compromising. Mm. Yeah, wow. That's the reality. All right. So... So where, okay, so you've got your stuff that you've said, this is not good, this is good. And then do, do we need to incorporate the exercise regime too? So let we could wrap this up with how do I get rid of this belly fat? Like what's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, here. So number one, obviously we have to get real with, am I stressed out? Am I getting seven to nine hours of sleep? Because even if you're not a stressed out person, but you're not getting a full seven hours of sleep, your body's in stress, releasing cortisol, keeping you awake all day. So just get real with your stress factors. Do the best you can to change. Yes, you've got to incorporate at least, you know, 20, 30 minutes of vigorous exercise every day, if you can. I mean, I'm speaking to a, the general audience. Some people might have mobility issues um, and not might not be able to do that. Have your bigger meals. So this is the other thing is that calories, your metabolism is fastest before 4 p.m., Mm -hmm. So if you're going to eat something at two o'clock and eat that same thing at six o'clock, that's going to turn into fat much quicker than if you ate it at two. So eat your calories earlier when your body is burning through more calories, because as the sun begins to rise, your metabolism goes up at noon. It's the highest and it takes a dip when the sun begins to set. Mm -hmm. So if you eat within that rhythm, like let's stop, let's stop listening to social media with this intermittent fasting, eating at 12 and eating at eight, you are asking for a fat belly. So eat at like nine, eat at two and have your smallest meal or just a herbal tea in the evening. So that's another way. And then the other thing too, is that when you go on fasting and when I was in backstage, I'm hearing everybody, you know, detox, detox, detox. So yes, spring cleaning is here. But when you fast, when you create a caloric deficit, you force your body to use fat as fuel. And to be honest, that's like the best way to get rid of belly fat is that the more you fast, whether it's two days, three days, five days, or even just 36 hours, but when you go past 24 hours of fasting, the body's forced to use fat as fuel and your stomach, that visceral fat, wow, that is a great and easy place to take fat, to take fuel from. Mm -hmm. And it's real close to the liver. And so it, it works perfectly for, for you, but remember that while you're releasing this fat during your detox, you're releasing toxins also because it is biologically um, alive. So you are, um, it's very biologically active, um, that fat. So you will release some toxins. Maybe you might get some headaches and stuff through your detox, but the more you can make fasting and incorporate fasting in your regular everyday life, I mean, I really recommend at least once a month you're fasting for two days, but I almost, I, I pretty much fast once a week for 36 hours. It's just so important to give. She fasted so well that she disappeared. What a, like the, the cliffhanger. Oh, there she's back. It's there's so there's... important. <laughs> <laughs> like we, we you so fasted, you fasted so well, you disappeared from the screen, you vanished. 
Yeah, I feel like that sometimes. Anyway, but but fasting, friends, I know sometimes I sound like a broken record, but, um, you know, fasting is very healing. You don't have to do the juice from us. I mean, you can, of course, but you could just do water for two days. I wouldn't go longer than two days on just water because uh, I think that needs to be supervised. Um, and I'm not talking about smoothies. I'm saying that you have to have like a real caloric deficit. You'll force your system to use that fat as fuel and you will get rid of that. So in your eating periods, you are exercising, you're eating in the peak of the day when calories are, are burned quicker and you're not stressed out and you're sleeping well at night. I mean, that's the answer to belly fat. Well, something tells me you have to leave because you're on your way back to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, I'm, on my, I'm almost there actually. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. How long was the road trip? Uh, generally, uh, just under four hours. I'm probably, oh, okay. I'm, I'm just hitting Barrie now, so okay. that might take me four hours to get through <laughs> Barrie to, to the 401, but gotcha. generally from home to Toronto, it's about okay. four hours. There is, there, there is a question here from the first lady of ACBN. Do you have to check with your doctor before fasting? I will always say to check with your doctor before fasting. Always. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying everybody does. If you're generally a healthy person and you don't feel you need to, that's your onus. But I uh, have a responsibility to say check with your doctor before fasting. Also, another question in regards to belly fat, uh, especially a lot of days people have the apps, they have the body fat scales. What and I don't know if you, you want to answer this, but when they say the recommended body fat that each individual should have, are those are those targets that we should be aiming for? Yeah, those are healthy targets. And remember that women have just naturally and should have a higher percentage of body fat than men. But if you do notice something, men tend to have these bigger bellies than women get, right? And doing some digging on that, there, there is um, a chemical that's used in your body to transport lipids from certain areas of the body. And for men, it's much bigger. That transportation vessel that takes your lipids to a certain area is much larger. And so it's understood that it's not really going to transport all around the body because again, the visceral fat is so broad. So it tends to just keep a lot of it in the stomach where for women, the transportation mechanism is much smaller, easier to go to the thighs, to the butt, to the breast, wherever the case is. But that's the understanding why men generally have bigger stomachs than women do. But also, you know, you could call it a meat belly. You could call it a beer belly. It, it's just extra calories. So, don't put in your mind, oh, I'm going to eat a, a high meat, a high fat diet and low carbohydrates, then I'll lose my stomach. Meat turns to fat. It turns to belly fat, just like carbohydrates do. Calories not burned will always turn to belly fat. Gotcha. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the big belly on men. Uh, yeah, that's that something I... Yeah, I got a street hockey team back together. <laughs> street hockey team. You know, Un under Chris, the light. Aaron, Ian, uh, I remember <laughs> playing with these guys every day after school. That, yeah, we've got uh, our kids back into that. So, so <laughs> let me ask also, do you see between both sexes the increase of the belly fat challenge? Or is it yeah. one more than the other? Or is it about the same? Or The thing is, is that men naturally have a higher metabolism and men naturally have a higher muscle mass. So because of that, it's easier for them to lose weight. So when I have my weight loss programs, um, my women will lose in two months anywhere from 10 to 22 pounds. My men will lose an average of 12 to 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it does tend to be easier for the men to lose weight faster, but that's because generally of the high muscle mass content in men um, compared to women. Uh, it's not a secret. Men are just generally, I hope nobody throws eggs at me, stronger than women. 
but that's not a bad thing. Okay. Uh, morning, Ottawa. Haven't seen morning. I haven't seen you for a while. Good to see. You. It says, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. Does Ms. Nicole believe in that? Yes. In fact, I believe in the no dinner diet, actually. Whoa. So most paupers don't. Uh, I don't know if they eat dinner, but um, yeah, I believe in big breakfast, really good lunch. And you shouldn't, if you have a big salad before your main course, at lunchtime, you, sh you should have enough fiber that makes you feel not you know, hungry at night. If there's two things that Carolyn is ingrained in my brain mm -hmm. is water yep. and always having my salad before a big meal. Always, all, and, and if sometimes I'll just have salad for a meal, but I always, always have my salad before a meal. Always, any big meal, even if it's some chicken, Salad before it, salad before it. it. And Always. you're trying to do that earlier. So you're trying to get that done before four o'clock and then you oh, shouldn't yeah. really even oh, need yeah. dinner. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I no, I but you have disciplined me like eat eat the big meal before four o'clock, most definitely. And right, but see, here's the challenge though. People like myself are we work from home. Mm -hmm. When you what about people who work at an office? Yeah, it's a possible. I mean, I, I've been eating this way for like 20 years and I used to work in an office all the time. So the option is I would either eat my big meal in the morning and take my fruits to the office or I would just bring my big salad and my cooked meal and eat it at the office if I knew I was going to get, you know, a 45 minute break. But, you know, that would be a rearranging of your schedule that I could do individually with people. People. All right. Yeah. Morning Ottawa goes, love the sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> love. The so I know you got to get moving, but just before we leave, mm -hmm. we've got to have you just talk about it again. Yes, I would love to. The upcoming event. Yes. So in Durham, May 5th, 1 to 5 p.m. I really want you to be there. We've got m almost 40 plant-based vendors, small businesses that are going to be showcasing their products. There's free samples. There's discounted items from food to hair to skin to nails, men's products, women's products. Men's products? Everything. You can't even imagine. It's just, it's full of amazing amazing stuff from small businesses uh black white chinese indian brazilian like everybody wow. that you know cares about somebody's health or wants to give you a vegan treat is going to be there and um i really like tickets are on sale right now on eventbrite get your friends they're only 20 bucks and kids mm -hmm. under 12 12 and under are free and we have a full kid zone there's live testimonies there's cooking demos we have a vendor coming all the way from montreal to be there wow. i need you to tell all your friends and mm -hmm. and i want this event to be jam pack full of people supporting small businesses and learning so much about plant-based products because you're going to taste these products. You're going to be like, what? Plants taste this good? I mean, it's just going to be everything there. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. I knew a time where Kellen and her especially her sister, was mm -hmm. going, uh, how are we going to get vendors? How are we, how are we going to, how is this going to happen? And now... It's getting yes. near. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm so Dr. happy. Dr. Vibe, you were definitely key in, in helping with that. So no, really no. appreciate it. And mm -hmm. yeah, but you know what's happening now? And now that the momentum has started, people are just like, oh, I see you have an expo. Can I be a vendor? Can I be a vendor? And we're full. We've actually had to turn people away because we can nice. only fit a maximum of nice. 40 vendors in there. We are full. Nice. So we just need the people. You guys need the you need the you need the feet to do the trucking. Yeah, yeah and there's pro so many amazing prizes, in, including a cold press juicer. Like just go no, grab no, your no, tickets. No, 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 no. That's mine. Forget our. Right. <laughs> Sorry, that's mine. Did that, you get your mine. ticket yet, Doctor Vibe? Uh, no. Get on Eventbrite. Get that okay. ticket. All right, we're gonna do that. So look at this frequency of promotion says get your tickets now. You know, stream is gonna 
we need a U.S. tour, Carolyn Nicole. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Frequency of Ambrose, thanks for inviting us to be part of the plant-based event. Looking forward to seeing everyone and all. Look at this. I'm not always, I'm just sharing. I'm not mentoring morning. <laughs> I'm just sharing. Just want to help people score goals and get wins. The Frequency says it's okay to support small business owners. It's not support. It's vital to the country and the economy because most of the businesses that make things run in this country are the small business owners, mm -hmm. small and medium business owners. Absolutely. Well, enjoy the rest of your drive. I hope Be Barry doesn't uh, hold you back. Yes. Yes. Yeah, always be good okay. <laughs> As always, Carolyn, right, to God you and you your guys. team, don't just manage your time, manage your energy, and remember to give yourself grace. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right, man. Cool, cool. That's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. You see, guilt level wasn't too high today. No, you, okay. you, we, no, we got, I, we got you right at the beginning with the oh, oxtail. <laughs> right at the beginning, last Tuesday, yeah, oxtail. That was good. Yeah, oh, man, I am definitely going to be dropping. I'm going to be definitely dropping by that event, hundred percent, hundred percent. We're going to get our tickets too. Those yeah, we're going to definitely because you know what, your health is your wealth, mm -hmm. and I measure myself these days on health wealth and relationships i love that that's that's how that's how i measure myself and other people their health their wealth and their relationships so that's really cool so mr knight what's going on the rest of the week uh you know the youth opportunities fund that grant is due on wednesday so my head wow. is going to be down for the next <laughs> two days so people are trying to get a hold of me that might be why i am not answering my phone smart and I have to focus but Smart. Uh, beyond that, we actually, I want to thank the people that joined us on, oh my God, Saturday. Saturday. Evening. Yeah, we did a, a info, well, more of a working group about it, going through all the questions. So great questions. The recording is on my YouTube channel. So when Dr. Vibe put up how to get a hold of me, Ryan O'Neill Knight on YouTube, if you want to watch that replay. But uh, yeah, beyond that, just going to be talking with entrepreneurs like, like normal and seeing how we can support. But how about yourself, sir? How's the week going? Uh, okay. I've got two sessions with entrepreneur, black entrepreneurs. Uh, they're actually success story. There is someone who is, who was on the morning vibe that in the next few weeks, she's going to be on fly Nubian queen. Ah, that's awesome. She, she doesn't know that yet, oh, Okay, I was but I reached out to Dr. Alicia saying, hey, we had such and such a person on the platform talking about, can she would be all right to have her on? And she said, absolutely. Now, the only thing is, I'm hoping that Dr. Alicia will be able to join me in the conversation, but she's given her blessing to have her on uh, Fly Nubian Queen. So that person, she's going to get a nice surprise. Excellent. When I tell her that. So we're, <laughs> we're just... Uh, helping people score goals and get wins. That's, that's all we're doing. Uh, rest of the week, there's other things. There's something that's starting to happen that I, I guess we'll talk. I'll just say that in the near future, the Morning Vibe will be on another platform. Oh, okay. Hey, we're looking forward to that. Another <laughs> platform. And uh, I think that's it for today. So thank you, everybody, who come and hung out either live or on the replay. Again, you can watch replays of this epic conversation at the Dr. Vibe Show YouTube and Facebook, Afro-Caribbean Business Network Facebook and YouTube, and Ryan O'Neill Knight YouTube and LinkedIn. Ryan's getting on to the YouTube thing. Yes! You know who keeps pushing me? My son, Christian. He's like, what? Yeah. If you want to get more subscribers, you have to put up more videos. I was like, all right. I'm Hello. <laughs> Can we hire him? I know, right? <laughs> oh, no, and no. for those, um, so Christian, he loves to solve Rubik's Cubes. So we posted a video of him solving a Rubik's Cube. So check out my channel so you can see Christian. That's his first upload of him doing a Rubik's Cube. Actually, you know what that reminds me? I'm going to... And this is something people don't be afraid to ask. I'm going to be asking a very prominent social media content creator to see if she will come on the morning vibe. And she's a very prominent That'd social awesome. media. Uh, like I've I've seen her in chats and I've you know I've responded to some of her things. So I'm gonna I and I, I've got I'm gonna send a video message to her today. It's on my list, and I have a very interesting 
hooked to see if she will come on because if she comes on, family, okay. Well, I don't know if it's gonna be on the morning vibe or where if she comes on, she has major okay. So you're saying Cher Jones? No, this this person's much, much bigger than Cher Jones. Yeah, okay. and no offense to Cher yeah, Jones. Well, fans of Cher Jones, you know, but I actually I knew she, I knew Sherry Jones way back, but this person is much, much bigger than Sherry Jones. Gotcha. Check out, shout out to the kids encouraging their parents to do more. Yes. 100%. That's the only reason I have a Discord channel as well. My ah! daughter, Jasmine set it up for me. There you go. <laughs> so, Claudia, yeah. Sean Martin, and people, join our Discord group. We'd love you to yeah. continue the conversation. That'd be great. Like, I know, did Ryan, I, I don't know if you saw, but I did put the link up for that report that Wayne Harris talked about earlier on this Oh, the month. Deloitte one. Okay, nice. I want to check that. I also sent it to Dr. Boyce Watkins, and I have a feeling he's going to be talking about it on his platform. Nice. Okay. So, who? I wonder if it is. Well, <laughs> you can back you can back channel me, but I don't think you may know. But I never, never, <laughs> never underestimate people. Yes. All right. So, that's it. That's all. Uh We'll see you on Friday. And as always, live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. Block assumptions and aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Don't just manage your time, manage your energy. And remember to give yourself grades. And also, we'll be getting some help for starting in about two, well, about three weeks on the morning vibe. So I don't have to be doing too many things. We'll be getting some, some help for a while. All right. God bless. Peace to all. Keep the faith and walk good. And we will see you on Friday. We don't know if we'll see Ryan, but I'll be here. Bye.